Hello everybody, welcome back to Team Deathslinger, my name is Peter, and today we're going to be looking at an Anubis Mon deck profile. Now, this deck profile is going to be more focused towards the post-ban list, uh, post-march Anubis Mon deck list, when you're no longer able to run four Anubis Mons. So, uh, starting with our eggs, we have four of the BT6 Sunomon. Um, I like this egg because we're kind of building a pseudo Eismon engine. Uh, debatably not as good, but it kind of fills the role of cycling cards pretty efficiently. So we run the Sunomon egg. Uh, then when you play Merva, you have to run four Ignites. Uh, you need the cross material. The when attacking does come up, it's pretty useful. Um, <clears throat> but mostly we're looking for that memory gain, looking to use it as a material for our crossing. So it's a must of uh, at four. Then we're going to look at two of the new EX5 Labramons. Uh, this card's on play is just going to let us trash a card to return one Digimon with Dark Animal or Shaman. Um, this is actually really important now that Anubis is going to be hit and restricted to one, because if our Anubis stack dies, this can actually grab it back for us and allow us to recycle it. Um, the Inheritable is nice too, gains us a memory when we play Digimon by an effect, but it's less important than the on-play effect. <laughs> then we're going to go with four copies of the ST16 Gabumon. Gains you a memory at the start of your main phase, but the uh, we're more interested in the when attacking effect. This is going to be important in helping us build our almost Eismon effect. Uh, if you stack this up with the Sunomon effect, we're now drawing two and trashing one just on attack. Uh, and then we run one of the ST6 Gabumon because it's the same thing as ST16, but it's not hard once per turn. So it's effectively like having five copies of the same Inheritable, which is all we really care about. For champions, we are going to run four copies of the BT11 Dark Lizard Mon. Uh, it's a Retaliator, so we can play it back with Merva. That's really nice. The On Deletion, is kind of the final part of our Eismon engine that isn't really Eismon, but it's going to give us the full draw three trash two on deletion. So we look to either trip security with this, uh, get one free check in, or to swing it into something, have it die, clear a body, and then we're going to get uh, three draws and fill our trash with some pieces. And the nice thing about this too is when we discard two cards, we only really need to discard one other champion because we have the, uh, the this Dark Lizard Mon name is going to be in trash. So it, it's almost a piece itself that you want in trash. So. Really nice card. Um, then we'll, we'll take four copies of EX5 Dobermon X. The on play will give this Retaliate or another body on the board Retaliate. So when we play it out with Merva, it's effectively a Retaliate body. And when Digivolving, it's just going to let us cycle one card. We draw and then trash. Uh, the Inheritable is also nice, giving us a memory if we build a stack that lets us play cards. Just, you know, vanilla Anubis instead of going into our other level six. Two Saber Dramons, uh, it's kind of a must for this deck. Uh, Raid Retaliate is just ridiculously good. If you have to put it in Raising, it's not bad. Uh, you can effectively pa uh, threaten to pass turn at one, and then um, you know promote and swing into their stack if you have to. So this card's just great on the stack. It's good, played from trash. Uh, two is enough for me. I feel like with three, I see it more than I want to. So that's why we're at two. For our level fives, uh, the 4X of Blue Maramon from BT11 is our main level 5. We want to see it all the time. Uh, it's got Retaliate, and when Digivolving, we cycle two cards. So we're going to draw two, trash two. Gains a memory when we play a card by an effect. Uh, just more piece collecting. Um, it's just a great card. It All these fit the bill really nicely, giving us memory and cycling us cards. Uh, this slot, I am running three copies of the BT6 Skullgreymon. My reason for this being that if I get an Anubis Mod stack, and I discard this card... Uh, I get Retaliate on it, and then when I play out my Mervamon, I'm going to have a Retaliate blocker uh, as Anubismon, as well as the Mervamon and the two bodies that come out. So this is effectively giving me an extra blocker whenever I get into my Anubismon stack, and if I'm really, really hurting for pieces, I can use my when attacking to uh, cycle a piece into trash that I could potentially use when I go into Anubis afterwards. So uh, I like this card. I think it's a little bit underrated at the moment. Uh, I don't think it's crazy. If you're going to go and play in... Uh, you know, any tournaments, any events, anything like that, you definitely want to slot the May Crackmon here to clear out floodgates. Uh, that's really going to help you with, um, you know, uh, oh goodness, it's not pulling it up. There it goes. Um, it's going to help you actually stay online because otherwise you're going to get blocked out by anything that stops you from playing cards by effect. So this card is what I would run in that slot if you're looking to be a little bit more competitive. Uh, this tech profile is obviously just for fun because that's how we do things here. So I like running this card. Then we're going to go one copy of Lucimon Chaos Mode. Um, I like having the one instead of just running three sabers because if the opponent has blockers, this is going to get around them. And if they have a really obnoxious tamer, like just a memory setter, then you can pop their memory setter and try and 
get some control on the board outside of just rushing them down. So I feel like it's worth running just at one. Uh, if you don't want to shell out the money for it, you just run a third Saber Dramon, it's fine. Or a fourth Skull Greymon or May Crackmon or something like that. But I think it's nice to have it one. Then I am slotting three Minerva Mons back in now that Anubis Mon is restricted. Um, I don't think this card is bad. I think it's a little bit too passive for the meta, but uh, we're trying to do what we can with it. Um, being able to play Digimon when your opponent plays a Digimon is actually really strong against Lugamon, which is kind of interesting because if they try and go up their stack and uh, start playing out bodies, we're going to play out bodies of our own. We're going to steal memory with our inheritables, and then if they try and pop us with Hell Lugamon, well, we just play our body out, right? We're going to get our uh, Mervamon or uh, maybe Lucimon Chaos Mode and pop something else. So I think this uh, is actually a really nice option for hardwalling uh, Lugamon. So that's pretty cool. Then we go three copies of Mervamon. That's kind of the main combo piece of the deck. You go into Anubis or Minerva. You're looking to play out the Merva and then just start slamming bodies on the board. You're effectively going to pay it, play it for two um, after you get the memory back from the Ignite Mon underneath and from trashing cards with Anubis. So... It's, uh, you have to have it in the deck. And then our one copy of Anubis, it's going to be restricted, so I built the deck this way just because I'm not going to bother playing the deck for two months when I'm not competing anywhere, um, and then have to change it later, so I'll just build it in this version. Uh, great card. You Digivolve, you trash three cards in your hand, and then you play a purple Digimon card from Trash, uh, with its play cost reduced by, uh, up to six. So, that's really, really strong. It's also on main, not just when Digivolving, so... If this survives for a turn and your opponent cannot remove it, you're going to play another Mervamon and you're going to get like six bodies on board and just absolutely demolish them. So that's really, really strong. And when you play a, a Digimon by an effect, not once per turn, uh, you delete one of your opponent's level five or lower Digimon. And if it didn't delete, you're going to draw one. So you're going to play the Mervamon, you're going to draw or delete a body, uh, and then you're going to play out the two bodies from the Mervamon as well. And you're going to draw two more cards or delete two more level five or lower so you're controlling the board really really hard with this card and it's no wonder that it's getting restricted so we want to cycle for this we want to find it it's obviously our strongest card in the deck uh for level sevens i'm opting for one shine Greymon ruin mode it's really hard to say no to basically a yellow purple crimson blaze on a stick that recovers you one uh it's really good when you need it you're glad you have it if you don't have it then it sucks but you know I'd rather see it in my hand and not need it than be in a position where I think, man, I really wish I could clear a bunch of small bodies off the board and then, you know, I don't have it. So that's why it's in the deck. We go one calling uh, that grabs back our Anubis and we can pop our Minerva stack if we have to. Uh, so that's really nice as well. Um, two Pandemonium Flames. I always like this in my Minerva Mon shenanigans decks. Uh, being able to delete Minerva Mon to clear a level six on board and then immediately have advantage when you tap your Analog Utes and you get a Merva or a Lusamon potentially clearing another body, and then getting your, uh, maybe getting your raid checks if you go into Merva instead of the Lusamon. So you have a lot of potential to do a lot of damage with this card. So I run it at two. It's really nice. Uh, two purple memory boosts. I like having the memory boosts in the deck because we are not only digivolving the deck. So the wisdom trainings are fantastic, but I also like having the memory to work with for uh, playing our options. So I run it at two. I feel like that's enough. I see it when I want it. And if I don't want it, it's not really clogging up my engine. Four Wisdom Trainings, you always want to be able to reduce play cost. So, you know, have to run it at four. It's really efficient for cycling. Uh, if you don't have four copies of this card, you should go buy them. It's well worth the cost. Uh, Matt is our nicest tamer for the deck. He works really well as a memory setter just because he's going to recoup us memory when we start discarding cards, which we want to be doing anyways. So we run him at two just so we can see him when we want him. And then lastly, we go two Analog Utes. Uh, this is a really nice search tool. I don't run it at four just because we have a lot of options and a lot of tamers in the deck, and this card is going to whiff them. And it feels really, really bad to analog youth and send some wisdom trainings or purple memory boosts to trash or a pandemonium flame if you really need it for your play. So I keep it down at two, and again, I feel like it's one of those things that I just see it when I want it. So uh, that is my post ban list Minerva Mon, Anubis Mon, Merva Mon deck list. Uh, I feel like it plays really well so far. It's done pretty all right in testing against. Things like Greymon, Lugamon, uh, I tested it against Rosemon X, so it feels all right. I definitely recommend you give it a try. Uh, don't write it off just because Anubis Mon is banned, uh, and that's going to be it for the deck profile. So uh, leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe if you enjoyed it. Let me know if you like this format uh, with the Digimon.dev more than the 
in-person deck profiles with just my hands, uh, I can definitely go either way. So let me know what you think in the comments and uh, have a nice day. Thanks for watching.